sorry again for disturbing the sequence of the, of the program. Uh, this is a meeting where an expected event also happened. And you try to avoid this thing, but this time it seems like I have to be there. So having said that, uh, I'm glad to see how fast uh, Susanna is growing. You still remember the day I was at Airbag, the first inception meeting that we hosted you know, with a few organizations. And now I see 2,000 people online downloading uh, it. How much time do I have? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. So what I'm going to present is work that we are doing at the foundation to, to bring in more expertise, more skills, uh, than what we've seen in the, in the sector be, before. So we want to move from a stage where uh, the story of sanitation is like a star story where we complain about bad things. People dying and there's no access, we are slow in making more things. So there are certainly ways that we haven't explored enough, which I think uh, we should be investigating. And my message here is to share this with you, that there are other people outside there who, who can do that. So from our side, we decided to focus on, like the previous presentation of the one who will come later, on non-sewer sanitation solutions. So structuring this as it's shown on the, on the table, one area is really to investigate uh, scientific and new uh, technologies to, to reinvent the toilet. We, we believe that uh, this is an area where there's not much innovation happening. Uh, you can see just the exhibit here in, in this meeting. You find only very few uh, booths presenting. There's not even a toilet exhibit already. Even things on which we are working, there's nothing that an entrepreneur can come and you know, be inspired and think hey, if we can make a business out of it or if there is really an opportunity to, to make a deal, there's nothing. Uh, we are also aware that a billion of people without uh, toilets, so we have some focus on this, we're financing a lot and very much involved in policy and policy workers. So our inventing the, the toilet uh, program is really trying to bring in innovation along the value chain. So I'll detail this a bit more. So it means that already at the household level, you know, what type of toilet uh, can we put in place something which can be attractive, affordable for people. Uh, on the waste transportation component, the whole is uh, we have existing truck, at this truck really doing the best work. Sometimes we have hand cars. Are those handcuffs really designed to, to service the areas where they are working? I mean, the small incremental improvement which is happening, but not really uh, big innovation. So we are challenging universities, industries to, to bring in uh, new ideas and new new technologies. So when we, I talk about this, people think, okay, we'll be inventing something which uh, no one can afford. So I like to take the, the example of cell phones or computers. You know, the first one were maybe very expensive, but now we are, if you are the university, you can buy a laptop. Uh, everyone has access to a different level of cell phones, so you go to villages, even in rural area, people can buy. And we think uh, if there is a lot of inventors, uh, industries engaged, in, in the sanitation sector, we might be maybe following the same path. Maybe this will help accelerating uh, access to sanitation <coughs> infrastructure. So our, we've, when we send this course out, we give targets, clear outcome to, to the industries and the inventors working in this. Uh, the cost of the technology that we see here, we tell them, shouldn't cost five, more than five cents per day per user. They will say this is a challenge for them, but this is what we want. If you want the poor people, you know, being able to buy this. So some of the technologies, these are things that we did not invent. These are systems that are more than that uh, innovative or uh, based on um, chemical
chemical engineering processes, which are there processing waste at industrial scales. Uh, can we scale down some of these processes and technologies and reinvent the toilet? Can we build industries around these processes to process waste at neighborhood, at city scale? Because so far what we've been focusing on is composting and composting and sometimes drying bed. The problem I see there is often we, we're not building a value chain where business operators can come and really make money out of this, uh, out of this sector. So you may be able to sell toilet, you may be able to organize a collection, but at the end of the day, your treatment plant is not really uh, profitable. If we compare this to the other sectors, uh, water or electricity, and those people you see, some are here in the room, and I think in this meeting, they shine because they see themselves, you know, as people working in very sexy industries. Then we can do the same in, in the sanitation sector. And there are many opportunities that these are some of the things that, uh, technology I think we can, we can further explore. Uh, this is something on the collection side. Uh, we, we know that the existing track, which is emptying and driving around in many cities, are not the best ones. These are not designed to empty toilets. So when I also call this track, they will just take out the duplicate fraction and this track remain. And in some places, people have to go down. If you do a urine diuretic toilet or whatever, uh, how is this sludge uh, being collected? So at the household level, you can say, oh, people will just you know, do it by hand. But can we really think of a very professional service provision? I dream of a system where maybe it's an entrepreneur who is responsible for managing the toilet. And he will come on a regular basis, he has a subscription, and he will maintain your system exactly like it's done in other services. So why can't we think about something which is really compelling? So that's where we are, we are focused. So this uh, emptying and transportation device, the way we see it, it's actually being wet up, uh, should be able to separate, to concentrate the biosolid for further valorization, filter and treat the effluent on site, and also separate the sand and garbage which you can find in, in the lottery. So, a system like this, we say that uh, technology which should be able to service several households before uh, traveling to the dumping site so that you can also reduce the, the, the operational cost for, for the trade. Some overviews of uh, potential technologies or processes which are used actually as scale to recover energy from waste, which I think we can really seriously start investigating in our sanitation uh, industries. Uh, gasification, this is something used already. So when I tell people, you know, we want to turn human waste into energy, you know, if you go to Lausanne, there is this wastewater treatment plant, this solid waste treatment plant doing something like this. Right. And we have latrine, and we still not able to make this link. So maybe it's too much expensive, this is why we cannot build it. But we are working with those industries to bring down the cost and make sure that we can embed these technologies in a sustainable financial and economic model. So other options are lighters and have mobile or stationary one in South Africa. They just built a uh, first version of what they call the, the LABIPA. It's a thermomechanical processing unit to process uh, dry sludge and you get a safe product which you can you can sell to farmers or uh, estate developers for investment. The biogas technology, everyone knows this, but for a long time, when I was a researcher, I was always asking, uh, why can't we build these things you know, at city level? So most of the wastewater, uh, sorry, figure sludge treatment plant that I will see, uh, Settling pond and then the effluent uh, is not really well treated and then it flows in the Indian environment and creates some, some problems. You can recover the energy, these are, these are good examples. It's used in the uh, food processing industry a lot, in many places, in, in India, in China, in Europe, in the US. And these are opportunities that we, we haven't explored and we think 
If you can operate such system, recovering the gas and selling this to a local market, you may tell me this is maybe a dream. Yes, it is a dream for the moment that invention can bring costs down and make technologies available to the people. And this is where we are putting our bet and we're putting money to help those industries making this thing work in institutions. So there are several of them. What we are doing is actually trying to see what are the leading <coughs> options, uh, what is almost mature on the market that we can, we can try quickly. Uh, the biogas system, this is robust, well known, is working as scale in several countries, but gasifier, uh, fertilizer bed, or paralyzer, these are still technologies which cost uh, too much, not really stable for the moment to be introduced. We are putting bets on, on some of these, on these technologies. So I would like to encourage everyone in your project, uh, try to bring in industries as well, uh, those inventors, and they are interested. When you tell them, you share with them the potential which is there, they are interested to come and start making business as well. So I just want to invite uh, our sector professional to start making this, this thing as well. So, I presentation and yeah.